with that, we have um, more uh, around the venture side with uh, uh, our own very own uh, Hit Labs, very own uh, senior fellow, Greg Bauer, interviewing Michael Thomas from Bold Brain Ventures. Uh, again, Bold Brain Ventures is a very novel and unique and very relevant uh, fund, uh, given what is going on in, uh, in the world today, in that they are uh, actually a physician-driven venture fund. Uh, and Greg will go more into that in a little bit. But uh, uh, Greg, handing the virtual microphone over to you. Great. Thank you very much, Stan. If you uh, Can you hear me there? Just making sure the audio is right. Sure can. Great. Yeah, great. I'm, I'm Michael. Nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Um, it looked as though when I was going over your, your site, uh, it, it looked as though you really, your firm has really covered every aspect of, of launching a digital health technology um, from strategy to product development, funding, launch, and everything else. So, Given that wide experience and the scale of your business, can you speak to the audience today a little bit about um, what um, trends you're seeing in the way that these companies are being developed and some of their models in particular? Yes, absolutely. So thank you so much for having me. Uh, fantastic yeah. opportunity. Um, so we're uh, at Bull Brain Ventures, we primarily focus on machine learning and imaging technologies in the digital health space. And one of the things that we're seeing um, in terms of investment trends, and I think um, uh, from our, not only just from our perspective, but digital health in a broader perspective is that there's a new, there are requirements, uh, well, first of all, that there is a, a blending of hardware and software. So it's not always now just uh, software as a service or, Kind of software being rebranded as healthcare software. We're seeing a lot more integration and requirements for digital health to be a part of the med tech, med device, diagnostic ecosystem. So digital health really is becoming much more pervasive. It's becoming a requirement, uh, not only from an investor perspective, but from a market perspective. So solutions really are needed to um, integrate digital health in their in their strategy. So that's that's one of um, one of the trends. The other trend that we're seeing that folks probably are well aware of is that inflations are pretty high. Uh, I'm sorry, valuations are pretty high, uh, especially with inflation kind of skyrocketing and uh, lots of money chasing fewer deals. Um, so we, we are seeing a very challenging math formula when it comes to valuations and noticing that um, many of these opportunities are being priced for perfection. Uh, so one, one caveat I would have is just be aware of Sometimes the frothiest of valuations doesn't necessarily bode well from an execution perspective because uh, life has a funny way of uh, regressing to the mean. Uh, so. Yeah. so to that point, when you look at characteristics of potential organizations you would like to invest in, um, are there two or three in particular and, and how much, um, well, obviously evaluation plays a big part, but um, how do you coach the startup around valuation and what other characteristics are you looking for in making a decision to invest in them? Yeah, great question. So I would say one of the challenges that we have are folks that are really early on in the machine learning process, but lack access to data. And in, in healthcare and in digital health, getting access to healthcare data, to train your algorithms, to validate them um, is obviously, it's a, it's a big challenge. And so a lot of folks will come to us um, with inflated valuations, uh, but not necessarily having access to the right level of data and the right level of um, validation that, that would be appropriate. And um, so I would say that's one of the challenges that we're seeing is that the, the access to data is paramount early on. So when building and launching a digital health venture, uh, particularly with machine learning, uh, our counsel is usually to make sure you have the right partner or right access to data so that you can uh, really take care of some of those risk mitigating steps early on. Yeah. Uh, the other, the other uh, opportunity or some of the challenges that we're seeing is that um, digital health kind of started uh, with, with the idea again, it was more of a healthcare software play. Yeah. And what we're seeing is that some of the best opportunities really take on the role of understanding, and I hear Stan talk about this quite a bit, really good evidence-based medicine. You really have to focus on 
impacting clinical outcomes, impacting clinical decision pathways. And that requires good old fashioned clinical studies, uh, requires old fashioned science, uh, which uh, sometimes I think can be out of vogue in, a, in an environment where SaaS software gets ridiculous valuations. So I would say uh, we really look for opportunities where entrepreneurs and management teams have embraced evidence-based medicine as a core strategy. Yeah. Core strategy. Yeah. You know, interesting. Earlier this today in the show in the uh, conference, I spoke with um, Hannah um, Besba, uh, Hannah Bespis, and uh, from from Heal uh, Capital, and and she made an interesting point that many of the platforms today will be seen as migratory into uh, that role of provider. And so when you look at when you're dealing with all of these physicians and your you know, physician driven funding, how does some of that play into the work, the selection of the companies that you're looking at in terms of their ability to really play out in the care delivery models going forward? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, we're, we're seeing kind of a, a blend of, of the device, remote monitoring, old fashioned telemedicine, really trying to blend a lot to, to become more integrated in mainstream services. So it's not, not always to replace what's going on. Um, a lot of folks try to figure out if machine learning and digital health can, can replace uh, kind of the old yeah. fashioned uh, healthcare services. That's yes. gonna be really difficult to do in healthcare. Um, yeah. But I would agree. Anytime that you can kind of integrate and enhance what's currently going on, very nice incremental step, I think, uh, mitigates some risk and has a higher level of execution success probability. That's great. That's great. Well, um, in terms of looking, though, I guess my final question would be, uh, in terms of looking at opportunities in the next six months where you see the greatest uh, emphasis um, or traction. Is there a particular niche that you're looking at, in particular, you know, that you're that you're seeing traction with? Well, um, I mean, there's been some some highly publicized articles in the Wall Street Journal that really talk about, uh, hey, COVID has kind of brought to light the difficulty folks are having just getting in to see a doctor, um, and and kind of the old fashioned way of getting access to healthcare services. So that's that's one thing that we're seeing um, a lot of innovation in a combination of digital health and hardware, hardware software yep. play. Um, the other good. the other aspect is um, in machine learning. It's really folks are starting to look at um, evidence based and access to data first, and trying to make sure that they take a more traditional uh, evidence based approach. So we're we're seeing some of those better deals. So better quality, I'd say, okay. technologies that can affect medicine and. So we're, we're seeing those good opportunities. That's terrific. Thank you for that. Uh, Stan, it looks like uh, you're moving on to the next uh, segment here. Yes, we are. <clears throat> and thank you uh, both Greg and Mike for that tremendous, and again, 10 minutes of fame here, guys. That's how we work. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Outstanding insights. Thanks, so thanks, Mike. 